Hello everybody, oh, welcome back to my channel. I am Lucky Wolf and today I'm going to be doing another appropriately unhinged VGC meta recap. This time I'm going to be looking at VGC Regulation F and I'm specifically going to be looking at three different tournaments in this recap. First I'm going to kind of go over the tournament. I'm going to kind of do a timeline, if you will, of the three tournaments I will be looking at. Um, what won, how the meta shifted, and then I do... I'm gonna do something a little different, so buckle up. I'm gonna do something a little different today. I want to kind of end the video with a where I think the meta is going and some Pokemon I think are going to be gaining more popular. Po girl. Are be are going girl that are going to be gaining more popularity as the meta does change and shift and adjust. The first tournament I do want to look at is Portland Regionals, January 6th and 7th. So this regional, this regional happened a week? Less than a week, because I'm pretty sure Ladder for Regulation F wasn't live until the 4th of, of January. So this regional did take place less than a week after Ladder went live for Regulation F. It did have 502 Masters players. And nine rounds of Swiss. And so I do want to talk about top eight and the winner of this tournament. So the winner of the tournament was Alex Underhill with this team that you see right here. I call this a priority spam team. I love priority spam teams. This I would call a priority spam team. If you look, can you see? There you go. Okay. If you do look at the team, we have one, two, three, four, four of the six members. I almost said four of the five members. Four of the six members of this team do have priority moves. So what that kind of means is it doesn't matter if your opponent is in Tailwind, if your opponent is in Trick Room, if your opponent Icy Winds you or Electro Webs you, you are going to be going first because you have priority moves. So I really do like that uh, from, from Alex Underhill. Second place was uh, Chuppo with a Don Dozo team. And then we see kind of the rest of the teams that were in the top eight all kind of do have that, not all, many have that priority element, right? So even with uh, Chuppa, Chuppa did have the Chien Pao and the Dragonite core, so you have Sucker Punch and Extreme Speed respectively. Um, the Anton doesn't have that much priority. The only that I see is Fake Out on the Incineroar and then Priority Tailwind on the Tornadus. Then we go to Colin, who does once again have that same four priority core as Alex does. So you have the Extreme Speed, you have the Sucker Punch, you have the Thunder Clap, and then you also have another Extreme Speed Mon in the Entei. Um, so again, this, then, then we get to Brandon. Then we get to Brandon, who did come in fifth with a hard Trick Room team, which I, I'm sorry, but I always do love to see. I really always do love to see. You can never stop prepping for Trick Room. Same thing with Dozo. You can never stop prepping for Dozo. Any, <laughs> that's beside the point. So we do see, we have a priority spam stopper in the Ndidi who can set up the Psychic Train, which does stop all priority moves for grounded Pokemon. And all the Pokemon on a Brandon side of the field are grounded. So we see a priority stopper and then hard trick room with a scarf single strike Urshifu that does not have priority. There is no Sucker Punch on this Urshifu. So that is, so I think the only, I think, I think Brandon is the only trainer in top eight that does not have a single priority move, I believe, which is kind of cool to see. Then we, then we see uh, Joe. Joe also has one, two, three, four, four priority mons. And then we see uh, Ryan, one, two priority mons. And then to end it out, um, we see uh, Jose, who has one, two, and then fake out, which I'm not sure really counts, but I'm gonna count it. I'm gonna count it as a priority move. So we do see priority coming out strong, coming out hard, coming out fast in the beginning of regulation, in the beginning of regulation F. So I, I kind of want to jump, I'm gonna jump from Portland right here 
I'm gonna jump from Portland to the Victory Road Winter Challenge. Um, and so this was a, this is a online tour. So Portland was a in-person regional, uh, the Victory Road Winter Challenge is an online tour. It was nine rounds of Swiss, X2 top cut, so very run very similarly to fantastic practice and run very similarly to how we would see a regional run. This tournament was January 13th and 14th, so the very next weekend, question mark? Is that how time works? That is how time works. Nice. Okay, confirmed. That is how time works. So the Victory Road Winter Challenge was run the exact, the weekend exactly after Portland. So VGC Regulation F officially, officially on ladder and in tournaments has been out for about two weeks now. Slightly less than two weeks because it dropped on the fourth, but you get what I mean. So 258 players, so smaller than Portland, but still a very, very sizable player base. So we scroll down and this top eight looks so wildly different, so incredibly wildly different than the top eight of Portland. It's actually, it's actually nutty. It's actually absolutely nutty. So we do see what wins. We do see what wins is draft is a Ferrigraph, and Ferrigraph does have the power to stop priority moves, you know, unless there's neutralizing gas, unless there's a wheezing on the field or something like that, or skill swap, but that is beside the point. So Ferrigraph does have, does have the ability to stop priority moves, grounded or not, against your side of the field. So to me, yes, that makes total sense. But if we look, what other Pokemon did phenomenally, did absolutely phenomenally in the Victory Road Winter Challenge. Indeedee. It is the other Pokemon that stops priority. And so we do see Indeedee Hat one, sorry, I misspoke, I apologize, Iron Crown in shambles. What I meant to say was Indeedee Iron Crown, we see one, two, three, and I believe four, yeah, the person who came in eighth. So we see four Indeedy, well, Indeedy's over here, but you know what I mean. We see four Indeedy plus Iron Crown in top eight. That is half of top eight is Psy Spam, is Indeedy stopping that priority. And we see drastically less, less priority. We actually see no, in top eight, unless I'm mistaken, we see no Dragonite and we see no Chien Pao. And if we go back to looking at Portland, Dragonite Chien Pao, Dragonite Champau, Dragonite Champau, Dragonite Champau. So that is three in top eight. And now we see 0.00. .00. So already we can see in a week, in a week, we can see how much the meta is shifting and how much the meta is kind of catching up with what I would call that priority, with priority spam. So finally, I do want to look at Charlotte Regional that was, when's this video gonna go up? I don't know. I'm recording it on Wednesday. I hope it will go up on Friday. We'll see. But that was, regardless, the Charlotte Regional that was last weekend and how the meta is shifting even more. I don't, it's just so exciting. I don't know. It's just, to me, to see the meta kind of like, just right before our eyes, just to, to see the meta grow and shift is really fun and one of the things I personally love about playing Pokemon VGC. So let's hop into Charlotte. So we are here in Charlotte Regional, January 20th to the 21st. So uh, another week after. And 845 Masters players in Charlotte. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but I do believe that is the biggest Pokemon tournament Ever the biggest Pokemon regional? Absolutely nuts. I love, I love seeing VGC grow. I love seeing this game grow. It makes my heart so happy. And I, so I was there and just kind of like being a part of it and kind of feeling that energy, beautiful. It was, it was, I did horrible. I did absolutely horrendous, but I'm so happy I went. I got to meet some amazing people and just to kind of be a part of that atmosphere. Unmatched, unmatched. But back to why you're here, meta recap. So if we look, if we look at the teams, the top eight teams that did well, um, that did well, what am I saying? The top eight teams that did fantastically, that did phenomenally, better, better, at Charlotte. So winner, 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 giraffe. 
Giraffe is not only first. Giraffe is not only first, but Giraffe is also second. So once again, Giraffe is out here stopping that priority. So we do have two Giraffes, first and second. Additionally, another Pokemon we are seeing really dominate now is that dark type Urshifu. So the single strike Urshifu. So the on Wolf's team, who was the winner, uh, we do see a rapid strike Urshifu. However, on the runner-up team, it was a single strike Urshifu. Uh, all, every single one of these Urshifu are single strike Urshifu. So that is very, very cool to see. We're seeing the Urshifu kind of pop up because what was doing well? What did we see do well at VR? What, like in the Victory Road Winter Challenge, we saw Giraffe and we saw Indeedee do well in the Victory Road um, and Iron Crown do well in the Victory Road Challenge. So what is a absolutely phenomenal counter to those single strike Urshifu. So once again, we are just seeing the meta evolve right before our eyes. Additionally, I'm really sorry, there's actually three giraffes. I'm sorry, there's actually three giraffes in top cut. That's my bad. So we do have three giraffes in top cut, as well as a one, two, three, four, five, five single strike Urshifus. And I believe every single team has a dark type Pokemon. Every single team has a dark type Pokemon um, to make sure that they, to make sure that there is a counter to the, to the size spam, to make sure that there is a counter to giraffe. So we have, we actually have double. We have, we have a dark type here. We have a dark type here. We have double dark type here. Dark type, dark type, double dark type. Again, dark type, dark type, and oops, let me scroll down, and dark type in the roaring moon. So just seeing kind of where the meta is going and how it's shifting already is really, really cool to see. I also do want to give, I also do want to give a shout to um, the, the, I almost called it a Roaring Moon team. No, to the Gouging Fire team uh, that Luca did pilot expertly to get third at the regional. This is actually very similar to the team that I did end up taking. One of the big changes is the Rillaboom, and I really like the Rillaboom on this team. It gives you, it gives you mm, really nice lines into Psy Spam. Having your own, having your own terrain that then lets you go for Sucker Punch, or Sucker Punch, that kind of stuff, feels very, very, very good. It lets you go for Fake Out and Grassy Glide and everything like that. So I really do like that. It is also Howl on the Gouging Fire, and there are one, two, three, four, five. There are five physical attackers on this team, so the Howl does let you boost your own, boost Gouging Fire's own, attack, but then also boost the partner's attack. So you can be uh, pumping out even more damage. So I did I did just want to give a shout to that team as well. And I do want to say, I do want to say real quick, Smeargle, I see you. Smeargle, I see you here, buddy. I see you here, buddy. I see you. That's all I want to say. That's all I want to say about the Smeargle is that I do, is that I do see ya. So I do kind of want to, I do kind of want to end the video with some Pokemon that I think are going, we're going to be seeing more and are going to be kind of gaining some popularity in the meta as well as staying popular. I do think Single Strike Urshifu is going to remain very good. Uh, Single Strike Ursh is good into Dozo, is good into Giraffe, is good into Psy Spam. Um, can Oko Flutter Mane as well. So I think we're going to be seeing, I think Single Strike Ursh, I do believe, is here to stay. Additionally, one thing I think we're going to be seeing is more speed boosting Flutter. Uh, we've been seeing Specs Flutter, we've been seeing Special Attack boosting Flutter a little bit, but I think speed boosting Flutter is going to come back partially because speed boosting Flutter with Icy Wind next to single strike Urshifu can be so incredibly oppressive and can force your opponent to Terra immediately, you know? So I think that that, I think that um, we're going to be seeing more speed boosting Flutter. Additionally, I think we're going to be seeing more Roaring Moon popping up more and more. So uh, speed boosting Roaring Moon can act very similarly to like the speed boosting Gouging Fire, where you do have the, um, you do have the, uh, uh, what's it called? Breaking Swipe. You do have Breaking Swipe. Uh, you can outspeed Chien Pao. So it's still really good into 
a priority spam because you can uh, survive attacks and you can outspeed the Chien Pao and get an attack drop off before the Chien Pao gets to attack. Additionally, if it is the Dragonite that is there or if it is the um, uh, Entei that your opponent has on their side of the field who you can't intimidate, um, you can still drop the attack by going for by going for a breaking swipe. So that is still phenomenal into that kind of core, which I think will, even though we are seeing draft, even though we're seeing um, side spam pop up, I still think that core is always going to be strong. Priority is always going to be strong. Not being able to intimidate physical attackers is always going to be strong. So having an answer to that, I think is still very important. Additionally, fast knockoff. Fast knockoff, it was good in regulation E and it will continue to be good in reg regulation F. And you can also have something like tailwind or you can have acrobatics to hit non-Terra Ogre Ponds for very, very good damage. So I do think we are going to be seeing more Roaring Moon pop up. And the last Pokemon I was going to say, the last Pokemon I was going to say, I swear it was going to be a hot take. I swear, like, I don't think those two Mons that I just mentioned are going to be super hot takes, but the last Pokemon I was going to say, oh no, where is it in my head? This is why you take notes. This is why you take notes. It was going to be a hot take, too. It was going to be a hot take, too. Okay, give me just a second to think about it. Well, I thought about it for legitimately 10 minutes. 10 minutes? And I can't think of what Pokemon it was, so if I remember, I, I will put it in the comments down below. No, I'm pain. I will put it in the comments down below, but hopefully that was sufficiently unhinged. Hopefully that was sufficiently a meta recap. I really like doing these, and I think, again, like I said before, just watching how the meta is shifting and developing in less than a month, in less than a freaking month, is so cool to see. And one of the reasons I love, one of the reasons I love playing VGC, and I also think there are a lot of different archetypes that are viable right now, and a lot of different Pokemon that are viable right now. And I honestly can't wait to just continue to try them out. So if you did enjoy at any time, please feel free to leave a like, comment, or subscribe. If not, feel free to exactly know that. I know everybody has an absolutely amazing, Rest of your day. Okay. Bye.